Pipe Dream is a sailing boat that I have built out of this old steel cooling tower. My original dream was to sail her around the world, but time and money have always been against me. However, even after all these years, I have not given up, and I continue to try and keep the dream alive. Currently, I am completing a major refit and doing a few modifications that have seen me tear her apart and put her all back together again. The job is a bit difficult as the boat is in France and I live in the UK trying to survive the joy that is Brexit and the whole modern life thing. In this video I am building the new keel in my garage here in the UK. Once complete I will take it to France and hope that it fits. Right, so one of the problems you have when you're trying to weld something like this, like a keel, is you get a lot of distortion because basically as you pop these welds in, you pop the weld in like this, it pulls the plate like this and it pulls it like this. It pulls it in two directions at the same time. So you get curving. So now I've done this, the rear, uh, the bottom weld down the bottom has managed to curve the plates like this and like this, turning it into almost like a bowl type shape. So here I had a massive ding in where it bent the plate in because it was fixed to this bulkhead. This bit came in and that bit there went out. So to resolve it I've had to put these stringers down each side. Um, but to put the stringers in I had to straighten everything first. So our good old friend the persuader here came into being with ear defenders. I welded a just a piece of offcut steel right here, cut a piece of wood to the right shape, and then to shot, and then used a piece of wood like this and just hammered that down into place to push the steel out. And then I had to feel the side of the plate like this, get the hammer on the other side and bang it to tuck it in like this. I did lots of that sort of hammering around and I got it roughly into shape and then what I did is I ran the weld here and hammered it a little bit on the other side and then weld, hammer it a little bit and you can actually see the plate coming in as you're hammering and welding along until I got to this end and then I had to skip ahead and do the corner here and then work my way back a little bit. Remembering that if you've got a piece of plate like this you can't weld this and this and then hammer in the middle because you're trying to bend plate into nothing. You've got too much material here. So I started off leaving this end thing hammered, hammered, hammered and then when it was close enough for jazz then I could get the last bit because as you weld this, it shrinks the steel a little bit as well. So this section is just about done. Now I'm going to have to work my way forward and try and resolve this section. So this is the backbone that I've built the keel on. Now again, I've got distortion running against me. So, this is the front piece of tube here, which used to be my GPS pole, but hey, repurpose it. So, I cut it all down, it's a um, pretty heavy section of steel, so it's good enough for that. And it's, the curve shape is actually great, because when you look at the tube like this, and you measure it around here, it's the same as the NACA 0010 that I've been using on the base and pretty much the same as the NACA 0018 I've got for the top section. So that's the aerofoil sheet that I've chosen to use on this kit. I've mixed two together because the top had to be very wide because I need these as water tanks and here I need enough space to drop my toilet floor down and to drop my cabin floor down so I needed it to be quite wide here. Hopefully the curved sides will enable her to slide down the side of a wave without tipping, but also um, slow her down as she slides down that wave so she doesn't gain too much momentum on the side of the wave because if that happened the fear would be that she'd go so fast that then outrigger digs in and she goes over. So there's about 
10 different compromises I've had to run when designing this. I want to have enough volume to give me a reasonable buoyancy increase, so I've got something like 600 kg of buoyancy going on here. I wanted enough volume to get in two water tanks to give me around about 320 kilograms of water, 320 litres, which combined with my existing tank on the outrigger arm for the hot water tank, give me about half a tonne of water, a bit more. I wanted to have enough dimension here to get the cabin floor level around the toilet, just because it's always annoyed me the curve a little bit. And enough dimension here so I can drop the toilet floor down and give myself about that much more headroom so I don't have to keep on bending over in the toilet all the time. The other thing I wanted to do is have enough dimension back here to fit two batteries in the keel. I'm not going to fit all my batteries, but I'm taking two of my batteries down into the keel to lower my centre of gravity. It's not much, but every little bit helps. And that's my water pickup point for the pump. It just means that I'm more likely to get all the water out of this tank, or most of the water, out, which will be good for a couple of reasons. First, it means I won't, I'll have very little unusable water um, storage capacity, in that you'll be able to use almost all the water that comes out, you know, that you put in. Um, and the other thing is, is I want to be able to really drain down the tank, so that, um, you know, if I'm leaving the boat for a period of time or if I need to clean the tanks, you know, I can really get the, the old water out. So this here, I'm suffering from flu. It doesn't help working in a cold garage with snow and the middle of winter. Of course, I can't complain too much because I watch SV Seeker and they're constantly working in snow and ice and minus 10 or something. Whereas here it's about minus two, so, yeah. Um, so this is the toilet floor. Uh, there's another bit that goes back there. So it's the top of the tank and the, and the toilet floor. So it's got a nice curve in it so that the water goes down to one end. And I've got the new cabin floor here. And then pretty soon, hopefully tonight, I'm going to put the tank top on here, which will then be the uh, forward part of the cabin floor. Like that. Fair enough. Well, I'm going to have to weld this in place. I've run a knife along the protection plastic. Let's do this. Which is great because then it means I stop too much weld splatter from going everywhere because the anti splatter spray is quite toxic. So here we've got a join from the floor panel. Well, this is sort of the floor panel. Um, up to the stainless steel of the tank and then this is the steel of the hull. Now the cool thing I can do here is I can weld directly using 309 LSI wire from the steel across the stainless thin 0.9mm stainless to the 2mm stainless here so I get one joint with one weld, uh, sorry, well three pieces with one weld and it, it works quite nicely. Here we've got a couple of little fires, look. That's some diesel that leaked yesterday. And uh, the welder dust has set fire to it and it's just nicely, nicely going along there. One of the things with a diesel you see is, I, I knew this wasn't a watertight joint, so this is why the diesel's in here. It acts on capillary reaction, so even though the diesel was only full to here, you see any leaks that you had all the way up to here because it, it goes up the joints through the capillary action and comes out the top. Right, time for load up has begun. So there is the keel all ready to go. I've got to get the welder, the keel, the plasma cutter which is down there, gas bottle, that fan because I need to ventilate the spaces when I paint them so that the paint doesn't get something called abeam blushing and there's a compressor down that end and some of the steel then this is a bit dark here because it's night time I need to wheel it onto my trailer there and load it up with all my various other bits and pieces I also need to carry food clothing and everything I need for a 
about 10 days worth of work. So it's a bit of a task really. I've got Gary paint all the bits and pieces, the various stainless steel bits that I collected um, together, the various stainless steel plumbing fittings for things such as plumbing up the pump there. Although it's probably not a job for this trip, but I need to weld the nozzles in and everything. Make sure that I take the various tools that I need and that will be about it. And then tomorrow morning, first thing, I start the car and head to the ferry.